Okay, try and follow me on this one. A former Philadelphia news anchor claims he was wrongly fired and now he's taking his case to court. Tom Burlington said he was canned from Fox 29 in Philly over what he said in a newsroom meeting, not over the air, but in a meeting with colleagues. They were discussing the symbolic burial of the N-word by an NAACP youth council in Philadelphia. The word was reportedly used countless times during the ceremony. And that's when, behind closed doors in a meeting room with other producers and editorial staff, Burlington said, does this mean we can finally say the N-word, only he didn't say N-word, he said the full word. Now, Burlington's African-American co-workers, none too happy, as you'd imagine. Some say they were legitimately offended and complained to management. Burlington was forced to undergo sensitivity training and eventually let go. Now, all the while, Burlington says his African-American co-workers used that word but were not reprimanded. In his case, it could head to trial as soon as this Friday. And yes, ma'am, I'm going to you, not just as head of the former bias crimes unit, but also certain words, and there's only a few of them, carry certain connotations. This is definitely one of them. Nobody needs to have um, management tell you what you're allowed to and not allowed to say. However, should the race of a person mitigate the consequences if they use this word? Uh, I, I personally don't think so. I think at the end of the day, you look at what said... Why is it being said? What's the context? Um, the other thing, though, is I'm not certain that that's the only reason this gentleman is being terminated. So he's probably an employee at will. If he doesn't have an employment contract, well, he he's he an entitlement. Yeah. If he had a contract, but then they it's didn't very fire different. him during the contract period. They just refused to renew the contract. And that's perfectly within yep. their rights. So if you look at under employment law, they don't have to renew your contract. Mm -hmm. You don't have a right to that job, and most people don't have an employment contract. So they can terminate you for any number of reasons, except for race. And he's suing under Title VII because he's saying he was fired because he was white. Except we, again, again, it's a case where we don't have all of the information. If they simply decided not to renew the contract and didn't give him an explanation as to why, then I don't see where he has a case. But you prosecuted bias crimes before. Does the source of the comment matter as much as the comment? When you prosecute bias crimes, you learn that it's not even necessarily whether language is used. So you may have uh, racial language or ethnically, uh, yeah, ethnic slurs used, and it may not be a hate crime. You have to look at the circumstances in which it's used. So it may be an aggravating factor. It may be something that's sort of tangential, and you have maybe an assault, but not but an assault. But you know what I mean, Mayo, where if two blacks use one goes, my N, okay, that means something different than if any of the other five white guys at this table said the N You look word. to see what the intent is. And the intent can be the same. I mean, even if you have people of the same, quote, unquote, uh, ethnic background, if the intent is, uh, is, is to harm and is malicious intent, that's when you start to look at whether it's actionable as a possible hate crime or actionable for civil rights purposes. If it's not, uh, then it's different. And, and the reality is you can look at people of the same ethnicity. You go to Ireland and, and everyone there is Irish, and there can be an anti-Irish slur by two Irish people, between two Irish people, but one is Catholic and one is Protestant. So the meaning there can be very derogatory and can be very hurtful and it can be designed uh, to, to aggravate a crime or to make send a message to someone that they're not going to be tolerated based upon who they are. So that's really what it is. It's a crime against a person. It's trying to deny you from being who you are. It's, it's interesting what's going to happen here and how they look at it, because I think at the end of the day, maybe it should or it shouldn't, but I think who's saying it and trying to imagine the context the person saying it, that means as much as even if somebody said the exact same comment to another person of color, but if they're of color, it will carry, A, obviously not a punishment within that uh, broadcast station, but also, I think, realistically, a different meaning. And I don't know how the law catches up with context. Well, Rich, can I just say yeah. something? You know, you're looking at this guy, and everybody's thinking about him saying it. You've got to realize that he's in a workplace, too. And he's taking this word, and he's saying it. Regardless of how he means it, he's saying it in front of other people. And those people have a right to have a workplace where somebody's not doing that. And that's really ironic that he's going to bring this case under Title, Title VII. VII. And the reality is he, he's completely violating it by doing that. The, think of well, the poor person who has to sit there 
below him and listen to his nonsense. I, say, I, I don't want to hear anybody say it. I right. don't want to be someplace right. and hear someone say, well, you know, I'm saying it, I mean this. I don't want to have to hear it, period. But, but That's what, me. I don't but, care what color you are. But what if the other people of color in that same board meeting, if somebody of color said it and nobody got upset. I don't want to hear it. No, I, don't I care know. What color and you and, are. and I, I completely agree with that, but I think that that's part of his point. It's I'm white. I said it in a contextual setting where I did not mean to offend anybody, but I did. Whereas other people of color say it and nobody gets upset. That seems to be the basis of his claim. Well, his theory is that. You know, he did what was the, took the disciplinary measures that he was told to take. Said he was sorry, issued all the apologies, and his coworkers, including his co-anchor, agitated to management of Fox to get him fired. So the legal question in the case is whether the acts of, for example, the co-anchor can be imputed to the management of Fox. He doesn't claim that Fox did anything wrong, even though they're the, the defendants. So he's trying to take the intent of the coworkers who are not at the managerial level and impute mm. them onto the corporation. And the, mo the case, not to get too technical, has been pending for five yeah. years. It survived summary judgment. He also judgment, claims, and by the way, it. that he became unemployable in the yeah. industry. And now I think he's a real estate agent. No one would touch him with a 10-foot pole. At the same end, though, if you're an at-will and then you're the employer and you have to think about who is being, in effect, uh, the communicator of your product and right. what it will bring to it, no one has to look too much further, albeit in a different case, than NBC right now it's with what they're figuring out who's going to be at their end. And if that's Start. their defense, they win. We jump to a break. When we come back, we'll have much more here. Please stay with us on RFL.